Well, Nation of Fit and Ten, it is day 21. Three weeks in, 30% in. Day two of the scans. Uh, I will run some scans tomorrow. We're somewhere a little over halfway through the scans. Uh, overall scans are really, really, really good. If you're one of those people that haven't, you know, you need to, if you're one of those people that hasn't done as well as you expected, just be patient, hang in there, things will come around, okay? The first three weeks are hard for a lot of people because of the, you know, part of that three weeks is the learning period. Part of that three weeks is like, you know, acclimating to the change, right? So it's, you know, it's, you're not even getting your numbers, right? For the first, for the first week or so. Um, and you're learning how to exercise, okay? Uh, you're learning how to do some of these resistance-based movements and stuff like that. So everything builds up over time a bit more, okay? Um, yeah, I guess I, I, I was gonna say this has, has nothing to do with, you know, your metabolism kicking in or anything like that, okay? That's just, uh, just, well, I don't wanna sound like a jerk, it's just not true, okay. I don't want to make fun of people here. Okay, um, I don't know. If, I don't know if I answered this question yesterday or not. I think I started to, but I'll just reiterate it. So why do some oils become bad when heated? Again, most of these oils, or all these oils, really are uh, oils that contain multiple double bonds, which just makes them more unstable. And you may not understand what that means if you don't have a science background, a chemistry background. Um, but you can kind of think of it as um, basically, these these fats that have multiple double bonds, they are they're able to be more reactive. Um, so they're they're just not as stable. And I think I did mention this yesterday. Um, so you know, again, when we're going with fats that are saturated, saturated means no double bonds essentially. They are saturated. Uh, these are going to be the most stable. These are the best cooking fats. Okay. Um, Butter, coconut oil, uh, lard. Um, I actually, I don't even actually know if lard is pure saturated, to be honest with you. I'd actually really have to look that up. I, I would actually think that's probably some monounsaturated fat, monounsaturated fat in there. But things like butter and coconut oil are the two that just that come off the top of my head, okay? But saturated fat. Okay, um, let's go to the next question here. Um, name something specific you can improve on for the following week. I need to plan my protein better and prepare more of my foods. I relied on body energy club smoothies a couple times. Okay, so uh, the body energy club smoothies are very, very dangerous. They are super delicious. They are super delicious, but they are very, I'm pretty certain they're pretty calorie dense. There's a ton of nut butter in there. And, uh, and dates, I, I suspect, okay? So I bet you in those smoothies, you're getting seven or 800 calories, okay? And, 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 a, and a ton of fat. So be very, very careful with those. Um, of course, you don't even know what the macros are because they don't tell you. So, um, or I'm trying to remember now, if they do tell you, so either they do tell you and I don't believe them <laughs> or they don't even tell you, okay? Um, but, um, but if you just watch them make it, just watch them make it, um, things are not really measured. So even if they do tell you, and, and even if they are trying to be uh, reasonably close, you can tell that they're not when they make it, okay? But they are very good shakes, and they're not, quote, unhealthy. So I'm not putting them down. I'm just saying that you know they're going to be very, very calorie dense. Um, although I don't really know how we, how we really want to define health here. This is... I'm sure many ways to do that. And there's many, many perspectives on health. All right, save that for another video perhaps. Now, uh, name something specific you need help with. More recipes that are easy to prepare and or meal prep. Okay, I'm gonna tell you some of my favorites. I realize I may not be the best person for this. I should really get Martina to chime in on this, but I go for the uh, quick and easy. So the things like the Greek yogurts with fruit, uh, cottage cheese with fruit. Um, I, I, I'm a big proponent of oatmeal because oatmeal is really quick to make. I like to do oatmeal and egg whites. I can just like dry oatmeal, egg whites, cook it together, mash in some fruit. Um, again, these are very quick to make. Uh, Isobars, I'm a huge fan of. Um, smoothies, 
Okay, so protein powders with different fruits. These can be frozen berries, you know, mixed berries or single berries, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, you know, blackberries, um, uh, bananas. You could put in some, uh, I would try to go with lower calorie type uh, liquids like, you know, almond milk or something like that uh, to mix in with there. Uh, you could put in nut butters. Just be very careful though because obviously, as I just mentioned with the, with the body energy smoothie, this can, you know, really ramp up your fat, right? And as a result, your calories. Um, so smoothies are another big one for me. Uh, what else? Um, hard boiled eggs. Um, so even eggs and toast. So I'll do like, uh, sometimes if I'm in a rush and I don't have that much time, I can whip up some scrambled eggs and toast very fast. Nothing wrong with that. Um, what else? Um, of course, I always have meats made, but I guess that's sort of maybe defeating the purpose of this question because if we're really just talking about something that's easy on the go. But if you pre-make your meats, that's going to help you a lot. I also do this with rice and potatoes. I buy those mini potatoes and, uh, and you know, just bake a big sheet of them so they're ready to go. Um, yeah, what else can I think of off, right off the top of my head? Um, I do have Quest bars as well. Quest protein bars, but um, I typically have two to three. I'm trying not to like eat too many of the ISO bars, just because I just don't want too many of my calories coming from one thing. But I can't really think of really a bad reason, or a reason why that would would be, would be bad. It's a mixture of a bunch of foods, so. Um, yeah, vegetables too, right? We can't forget our vegetables, so have some, some of those made. I like to do, um, I always have sauerkraut in hand, okay, which is fermented cabbage, essentially. Um, and um, Brussels sprouts. I like to really like bake my Brussels sprouts really well. So I, I will usually cut them up into halves. Then I'll bake them like I'll over bake them. They're very, very brown, but they taste um, pretty good that way. Um, yeah, I think uh, anything else I can think of? Um, Oh, sometimes too. This is a this is a good, a good one, but it's it, and it's tasty, but it's expensive. Is uh, smoked salmon? That's another one of my go tos, right? Smoked salmon's easy protein. It's right there. It's just really really expensive. Um, I like to buy that Norwegian one from Costco. It's like comes in a big sort of cardboard plate, and then it's um, you know covered in plastic. Okay, is there anything else you'd like me to cover in this week's video series? Is there a downside to doing more cardio than the plan? Uh, no, there there isn't. You're gonna burn more. You're gonna burn more calories, so you'll you'll burn through more fat. Now, obviously, there's going to be a point of diminishing returns, I think, um, but I don't know if you'd actually really get there. Um, certainly, if you do more cardio, you're gonna expend more energy. If you expend more energy, you're gonna learn. You're gonna lose more body fat. But if you go too far with that, you know you're probably gonna lose some lean mass as well. Okay, too much of a deficit, you're gonna lose some lean mass. And maybe that's not important to you. I think it should be important to you, but I'm not you, so, um, you know, but still, you know, lean mass is, plays a part in your, in your future, in terms of uh, your future health, but also in keeping fat off of you, right? Yeah, lean body mass, just as a reminder, is your key predictor of, uh, of, of uh, your metabolism, okay? Um, all right, how are we doing here? 8.40. Okay, let's get the message of the day. Let's try to make this video reasonable in terms of time. Um, all right, since some of you think, uh, well, actually, this is, may not be true. Maybe some of you think, maybe some of you think that it requires talent, this whole thing of getting in shape, of losing body fat, of getting stronger, of, you know, whatever. Maybe you think it requires talent, but I'm gonna tell you that it doesn't require talent, and then I will tell you five things that don't require talent that will help you in this challenge. And uh, they are as follows. Uh, following a system. Following a system requires zero talent. Um, organization, again, requires zero talent. The amount of effort you put in, effort itself, uh, no talent there. Being prepared, again, especially with your food. Again, zero talent required for that and a positive attitude, right? Zero talent for that one as well. Okay, so I'll say it again. Five things that require zero talent that will certainly help you in this challenge. Following a system, organization, effort, being prepared, and a positive attitude. 
there you go. All right, positive energy, positive vibes, believe in yourself for the love of God. Give some gratitude. I'll talk to you all tomorrow. And uh, fingers crossed for your scan if you haven't done it. See you guys.